today we have our next what's next video and wow that kind of sounded weird either way it is the AFC North Pittsburgh and Baltimore and all those teams in there probably the best division in the NFL on its entirety either way uh, just want to say before we get into this video make sure to like and subscribe it does a ton for my channel and I'm trying to hit 1,000 subs by the end of the month and I'll do a jersey giveaway then so make sure uh, we do that hit that button takes you like two seconds and doesn't cost you a thing either way let's get right into this video but first, I got to tell you guys about my new partnership with Dubby Energy. Dubby Energy is an energy drink mix that has no artificial flavors, colors, or sugars, uh, no sugar at all, um, and, and no hidden ingredients. It's, it's all right there for you on the bottle, nothing hidden from you whatsoever. It has really unique flavors, something you won't taste in other energy drinks, and only costs around a dollar per drink. A lot cheaper than Starbucks, coffee, or, you know, cans of soda, or cans of other energy drinks, whatever. It's cheaper than that. It's also made in the USA, so make sure you go to w.gg and check out the uh, the entirety of their products they have. They're great. And make sure you use code SHREDDER, S-H-R-D-3-R, right there on the screen for you to get a 10% discount on your order. So here we are with the AFC North. We have the Bengals, Steelers, Browns, and Ravens. Let's get straight into this. So starting off in this division, you have the Bengals. They went 9-8 and eight this year. They had 11.5 projected wins. Didn't go quite that well, basically because they lost Joe Burrow to Week 11 for the rest of the season. And also, he came into the year with injuries. That was one of the things that went wrong as well. Jake Browning went 4-3 and three as a starter, but it just wasn't enough. And they had some defensive issues. Not great. They weren't terrible, but not great. And overall health was just an issue across the board. They do have Zach Taylor still and Lou Anarumo, who is a very good defensive coordinator. And then they have Dan Pitcher, who is their new offensive coordinator, taking over for Brian Callahan as he is now the uh, new o or excuse me, the new head coach of the Tennessee Titans. Going into the roster, it's a solid group. However, they're going to lose a lot of players this coming year. Joe Burrow and I are obviously Jake Browning back up. Not too bad. Chase Brown is an interesting young player that I'd like to see develop more and probably take the place of Joe Mixon long term. T. Higgins and Andre Yosevis are, uh, you know, solid receivers for sure. T. Higgins is one of the better receivers uh, in the league, best wide receiver twos in the league for sure. But I don't know how good he is in terms of a wide receiver one. I don't know if I'd pay him like a wide receiver one. Andre Yosevis is a rookie from Princeton who showed out when he got the chances, and I think he'll be good when he gets his chance. Uh, and then the O-line, there, there's some just average guys there. Orlando Brown is far too overpaid and whatnot. And, you know, the tight end position as well, very average. They brought in Irv Smith to be something, and he didn't do nothing. Tanner Hudson kind of came out of nowhere as a decent tight end, but we'll see how long that prevails. I, I just don't know for sure. Um, we'll see what it looks like in the long term. Uh, then you have on the defensive side of the ball, you have Sam Hubbard, you have Trey Hendrickson, some very solid players, no doubt about it. Uh, you know, that that's definitely a very good group, uh, and it's not something you're worried about whatsoever. Miles Murphy is a good player coming out of, uh, you know, the draft this past year, and it's, it, it, he. I wish he would have played more, but... I don't know. They'll probably end up replacing Sam Hubbard with him sooner rather than later. Jordan Battle played very well as a rookie this year when given the chances. Mike Hilton is one of the best nickel corners in the league. DJ Turner also played decently fine whenever he was playing, but he's a young corner. He'll develop some, I'm sure. Going forward to this offseason, you have some a lot of free agency issues. That's where you're going to kind of run into some issues on this team. You need a defensive interior because of DJ Reader and guys like him and B.J. Hill who are getting older and also getting off contracts soon. Offensive tackle is another thing you could definitely improve. And wide receivers are, you know, you're losing a lot, so you have to figure that out too. Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, and Trenton Irwin are all free agents. To me, you have to bring back either Higgins or Boyd, but I don't know if Higgins is worth the number he's going to demand. I feel like Boyd might be the better option. Um, they have $61 million in cap room. That looks awesome. But... The problem is they start paying Joe Burrow soon. They have to pay Jamar Chase soon. You know, there's there's young guys that they've played really well that they're going to have to pay. I don't know that you're going to be able to bring back all these guys, or at least comfortably, with room to spare. That's for sure. Uh, draft capital, they're all there. So here's what I think they do. Round one, you go offensive tackle or defensive interior, whichever one you please. Round two, you take a wide receiver because you need a talented wide receiver to come up. And unless like a guy like Malik Washington falls to the third, which I think right now he's definitely going to be a second-round pick, looking at him as he sits right now. 
Um, you have some definite holes at O-line and corner, so I, I don't know what you're going to be able to do there. But you, you've got to find guys in these late rounds because you're not going to be able to sign everybody. Should you try to bring back DJ Reader and Shadobi Awuzie? You should try, but don't pay them too much because the numbers there are going to be very, very tough. Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, Trenton, Irwin, they're, it's a tough group. To me, I think you bring back Tyler Boyd, and that's just what it is. How Cincinnati can improve this year, number one, stay healthy. There's every every year there's a good team who just suffers from the injury bug, and it just it takes them out of the whole thing, uh, the whole lineup. Two, don't pay T. Higgins. I think it's not worth it at this point. If he was a legitimate, proven, like, almost number one guy, I think you do it. But I don't think he will be. I think he'll go somewhere, and what he'll output, he'll be overpaid. You also need to establish a better defense. They weren't bad, and Rumo should be able to handle this easily. But you have to be able to continue. Realistic additions they could do. J.C. Latham, Amarius Mims, two tackles out of Alabama and Georgia, who are really solid players, definitely would not hurt. Or Jerzon Newton would be a really good player if he falls far enough. And then the second round, guys, Jermaine Burton, Jalen Polk, Xavier Worthy, all receivers who should be there and could be very valuable pickups. Uh, on the free agency side of things, I think you hit either Chris Jones or Javon Kinlaw. Both solid players, one a great player. And if you can get Chris Jones to come from a rival team like the Chiefs, where you know maybe if he doesn't get picked back up by them, he feels a little slighted, he'd be okay with going to the Bengals because they're going to face them in the playoffs one way or another. DJ Chark would be a solid receiver to add just as like a you know cheaper depth option as a good veteran because he's played a while. But it is what it is. Looking at this team for next year, Amarius Mims, Xavier Worthy in the draft would be great. Javon Kinlaw, you know, is a cheaper option, but a solid player would be great up front. And I think it'd be really good for Cincinnati to do. Now let's go to Pittsburgh, who is the second to worst team in this division. They will finish 10 and 7, though. This is definitely like the best division in the NFL. They just the talent, the the competition here is legit. Um they only were projected with eight and a half wins, and you know that's a shot to Mike Tomlin. And the betting odds need to figure it out because he's just a better coach than anyone else in the league, and that's not a debate. If you think it is, you're wrong. Um, they had a lot of quarterback drama, and that kind of went into what went wrong. But at the same time, Matt Canada, he's a terrible offensive coordinator, probably the worst in the league starting the season, and you're not going to improve when you have that system. It's just a bad system where no one can succeed. No one. Ben Roethlisberger was able to succeed in his final year, not in the Canada system, only when he called the plays himself at the end of the games because Matt Canada is an idiot and couldn't call good plays. Kenny Pickett wavering, he, he just, he wasn't bad, but he wasn't good. He didn't improve, but he didn't decline. He kind of flatlined, which isn't great, but he hasn't played a whole ton. You typically give guys three years, and Kenny Pickett's played a legitimate year and a half. So we're, I'm, I'm not a Kenny Pickett fan. I've never been a Kenny Pickett fan. If you watch my other videos, you'll know that it's just not a guy that I really love. But I don't think it's fair to rule him out at this point. Mitch Trubisky is also a national terrorist. In terms of coaching staff, you have Mike Tomlin, who is the best coach in the league. And if you disagree, I think you should take a chance and listen to me here for a second. Bill Belichick's great, but he's not done anything without Brady. Arthur, I mean, well, I just read the name off the screen. Andy Reid's the next guy up, and... Yeah, you might say Andy Reid, he's, yeah, he's won three of the last four Super Bowls or whatever it is. Three of the last five. I don't care. Andy Reid was never able to do anything without a quarterback. So is that Mahomes or is that Reid? I think it's Mahomes. So, yeah, either way, Mike Tomlin, he's the GOAT. Uh, offensive coordinator Arthur Smith. A lot of people hated that move bringing him in. But honestly, is it that bad? Because he at least has had a very good offense in the league before. And, you know, he did it with an average quarterback in Ryan Tannehill who had really good stats during his time there. And Derrick Henry. No, the Steelers do not have a Derrick Henry, but they have a two-headed monster in Najee Harris and Jalen Warren. I think he could have a field day on offense there. Then defensive coordinator Terrell Austin, he's fine. His players speak highly of him. I'm not sure what to think just yet. Going on to the roster, looking at first the quarterback position. I'm not going to talk about Mitchell Trubisky anymore. Mason Rudolph and Kenny Pickett, though. Mason played so well in the last four games, and that's awesome. Did he really, though? He, he played well. He didn't play bad. He played well. He played good. Was he great? No. I think Kenny Pickett would have done the exact same thing had he been in those games. Because you have to take a second and stand back. Because people are arguing Kenny Pickett didn't play well this season. That's fair. But he was under the Matt Canada system the whole time. The Matt Canada play calls the whole time. Mason was not. When Kenny Pickett played one game outside of Matt Canada's tenure, 
he did just as good as Mason Rudolph did, if not better. I think he does the same, if not maybe even a little better, if he's given those chances later in the season. However, I don't think it was bad to stick with the hot-handed Mason. Let me make that clear. Najee Harris and Jalen Warren, they're good. They're, that's for sure. That's going to be a messy, messy thing to deal with defensively. George Pickens, a great young player. Broderick Jones, a great young player. Uh, he that played pretty well this year. But Mason Cole is also part of that Mitch Trubisky train where they need to be gone and gone now. There actually have been some cuts in the last couple days. Mitch Trubisky was cut. Um, so was Chakumo Kor for the backup right tackle. And so was Presley Harvin, the punter. Um, either way, defensively, we're looking at this unit here, and it's it's pretty good. It's not great, but it's pretty good. They suffered a pretty rough injury bug this year. Keanu Benton, really solid young player. Joey Porter Jr., really solid young player. TJ Watt should be the depoy. Not going to talk about it too much, but he led in every single stat, and there's nothing Miles Garrett does better than him, period. End of story. That's it. Quan Alexander and Cole Holcomb were both two linebackers that played really, really well when they were healthy, and then got hurt and took a big hit to the Steelers' defense. Patrick Peterson got a Hall of Fame resume, and that helps him, but at this age, you're not expecting a ton from him. He's going to play kind of some slot, some safety, some outside, whenever you need him, but he's not going to be a game-changing guy. Um, positions of need, to me, it's cornerback number one. you got to get some depth there. Then you need a center. That, those are really interchangeable, but cornerback, just it, it's rough right now. Um, the free agent-wise, you have a lot of depth pieces here, which is good because you're not losing any big names. But, you know, Mason Rudolph, does he deserve a chance to be brought back? Absolutely. He needs to be at least in competition next year um, if he wants to come back is the big thing. Miles Killebrew, he's probably, to me, the biggest guy right on that list that you have to bring back. Might sound crazy to a non-Steelers fan, but he was an all-pro as a special teamer, blocked like four punts this year. He's a big deal. And then you have negative $15 million in cap room, but they've already cleared over $13 million just by releasing those three players I mentioned a minute ago. So they're in a weird spot, but they'll make room. This is what the draft looks like. Num number one, Go get Cooper DeGene. This is, I think, a guaranteed what you have to do. I just, I don't see it another way. Round two is a center, whether it's Jackson Powers Johnson. He's projected as a first rounder right now. I don't think that happens. Centers don't go in the first round. Um, but Zach Frazier or, you know, another guy uh, around that time would, would be pretty good. And then linebacker. You could maybe go for a Jeremiah Trotter in round two instead of a center. But at the same time, I just feel like the center position is more of need. I don't think they should actually bring back all these players, but you have to bring back one of Monty Williams or uh, Monty Adams or Armand Watts. Miles Killebrew should be back. Elijah Riley sh probably will get brought back at a low number. Quan Alexander, it's kind of dependent on his age at this point. You'll just kind of see what happens there. Going forward, Pittsburgh has to figure out the quarterback situation. Whether it is Kenny Pickett, whether it is Mason Rudolph, whether it's a guy not on the team, that's great. However, it's not Justin Fields. To me, if you're a Steelers fan and you're sitting here questioning, is Kenny Pickett the guy and you, you don't think so, how can you even be okay with the idea of Justin Fields? If this guy didn't run a 4-6-40, he wouldn't be a starter right now, period, and no one would debate about it. He's had three years of play. Kenny's had one and a half. And I'm not a Kenny fan, but I'm certainly not a Fields fan. Fields has terrible mechanics, terrible footwork. There's nothing about him that's good. Just He's just not good, period, end of story. Uh, then figure out an offensive scheme. That's already really happened. I mean, they've got a legitimate coordinator in here now. And then the secondary, realistic additions, Cooper DeGene, Terry and Arnold, Amarius Mims all in round one, Powers Johnson or Zach Frazier round two, and then you go get maybe a veteran quarterback, a Ryan Tannehill, a Russell Wilson in, in for agency, or a Legereus Sneed. I, I'm not huge on the pick, but I know a lot of Steelers fans are of Legereus Sneed. It would be nice, but I just don't know for sure. To me, this is what the team should look like next year. Go get Cooper DeGene round one, grab Zach Frazier round two, and maybe get Russ in here. Broncos are already going to be paying him $40 million, so you can go in and get him at like basically a league minimum. Go into our next team, the Cleveland Browns. Had a good year, 11-6, and six, and they lost three quarterbacks. Deshaun Watson has been an issue. I don't think he's had a fair shake yet at this point because the injuries and the not playing for two years with all the situation and just football on only, like, has he really been given a chance? I don't know. Nick Chubb also got injured, and their defense kind of went fraudulent there in the playoffs. They also just they, they preyed on low-level teams, and that's what it was. Head coach Stefanski just won second uh, coach of the year award. Good for him. Ken Dorsey's interesting because he didn't like to run the ball in Buffalo, so now he's on a team that likes to run the ball. What's that going to look like? Jim Schwartz is a solid defensive coordinator, but did not deserve assistant coach of the year one way or another. That's what it is. Um, and then looking at this roster, you know, the, the line is nothing to worry about, but the receiving options are not great. Uh, Amari Cooper's great. After that, you're concerned. 
Njoku is a slightly, I mean, he's a good tight end, not a great one. Um, going to get a lot of hate for that, but he's overhyped. He's never been that good. Um, and it took Joe Flacco to just constantly throw the ball over the middle for him to be anything. You know, that's kind of the point here, the, the quarterback room. Joe Flacco, he's not going to probably do much this next year if he's back at all. Dewan Jones played really well as a rookie, and I'm interested to see how much he can do. But overall, there's not just a whole lot here other than the receiving room and the quarterbacks that need to be looked at. The defensive unit, a really good team. I mean, the fact that they got blown they got blown to shreds by the Texans is embarrassing because Miles Garrett, great player. Didn't deserve depoy, but a great player. Uh, Dalvin Tomlinson, very good. Jordan Elliott, solid. Maurice Hurst, solid. Zedaria Smith, very good. Ousha Kormoa, very, very good. Denzel Ward, very, very good. Grant Delpit, Jawan Thornhill, um, good players. Greg Newsom and Martin Emerson, very solid two, three corners. Uh, nothing, nothing bad there. But they just didn't look right. There's a lot of, there is holes here. No, no way about it. To me, they need a wide receiver. They need a tackle. They might need some linebacker help, some D-line help, some edge help. Because, you know, the, the, the D-line and the edge is really because of what they're losing. If you look to the right here, you see they're losing four guys on that front line unit. And that's going to be a problem. Whether they bring some of them back or whether they bring none of them back, you got to fill those holes some way or another. Um, the draft capital ain't great. A lot of fifth, sixth, and seventh rounders, but no first, no fourth. That's going to be a little rough. The talent's going to be limited. To me, round two, you got to get a receiver because a Cooper can't do it on his own. It's just not pretty. Offensive and defensive line are big hits in the next few picks just to make sure you have enough guys that aren't going to get hurt. Um, and then free agency. Sione Takitaki probably deserves a, a contract. Joe Flacco may deserve a contract. And you got to bring back some combination of two out of the four of those guys. That's really what it is there. They don't have any money, but you can figure things out in this day and age. How Cleveland can improve now? Quarterback stuff, whether it's Deshaun, whether it's Joe, whether it's, you know, I, I think personally Deshaun is definitely the highest ceiling. You go get him and just try to settle him in finally. Um, you need wide receiver help, and that could be a big problem. He doesn't have any help right there right now. Amari Cooper is great, and Joku is very solid. That's it. There's nothing else. Do more. Do better. Um, potential D-line losses, you just have to figure that out. That it, like I've said it, multiple times now. You're losing a lot. You can bring some of them back. You can address it in the draft. You can address it in free agency. Uh, to me, Rick, uh, some real additions that could happen are Ricky Pearsall, Roman Wilson in the second round. Good receivers. A little high maybe in the second round, but they're going to be farther back, so we'll just see what it lands there. In the you know mid-late rounds, you got Rook Aroro, a defensive lineman, or Makai Wingo. That could be really solid. Peyton Wilson, a linebacker from NC State, would be really good as well. And then you've got some veterans you could go out and get, like a Curtis Samuel to be a receiver two or three, and Tim Settle, Tier Tart as D-lineman. That's what I think they do here. Get a Tim Settle, get a Rook Aroro, be, beef up that D-line even more, kind of get the, get the names back in there, and get a Ricky Pearsall. would be a really solid pick. I think he's a really good receiver as well. Going to Baltimore. Um... They choked away another playoff game in Lamar's hands, man. It, it, it's rough. It's not pretty. Lamar should be better than this. He's not a winner. You can't argue that. When they have to put the ball in his hands to win a game, they lose. It's just that's it. That's it. They had every chance to win that AFC Championship game, and Lamar lost it. The defense held the Chiefs to zero points. No one does that. No one holds the Chiefs to zero points in the second half. And Lamar had all the chances to score and didn't do it. The running game is lackadaisical at, at times, and it's just something they got to figure out. And Lamar's arm is going to be a problem. He can't throw outside the numbers. We saw that in the Chiefs game. He overthrew multiple receivers on the outside, and that's a big, big issue. Going forward, you know, head coach John Harbaugh, he's fine. No problems with him. Todd Munkin, he was supposed to bring in this crazy good offense, and it was pretty good, but that's about it. Zachary Orr, he got uh, promoted excuse me, after Mike McDonald got hired by the Seahawks, but I don't know if you're really pressing the you know anything different here other than you know a different name in the control. Going to the offensive unit, it is solid. The line is good. We're not even going to really address that because it's pretty good. Tyler Linderbaum's great. Mark Andrews, Isaiah Likely, when healthy, great players. Good tight ends. Zay Flowers looked like a really good receiver in his rookie year. Just has some mental things he's got to just kind of get over, but it'll be fine. Lamar Jackson, a great player. Not a great quarterback, and that's going to be part of your problem. You also have a running back room. That's just not pretty right now. J.K. Dobbins, hurt. Keaton Mitchell, hurt. J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, free agents. Uh, Dalvin Cook, a free agent. Not a whole lot of pretty stuff there. On the defensive unit, a really good group as well. Um, you know, this is one of the best defensive units in the league for sure. Matty Buike had a great year. Michael Pierce is enormous. Uh, that's all I can say. He's enormous. J uh, Dafe Owe, very disappointing for sure with what he's supposed to be have done. Um, Raquan Smith, Patrick Queen, 
were great this year. Patrick Queen came out of nowhere because he's pretty much been a bust up until this year. Uh, but I believe they'll probably move off of him since they have Trenton Simpson waiting in the wings there. Jadavian Clowney, a bit of a career resurgence this year. And then the secondary. Brandon Stevens, Marlon Humphrey, Ronald Darby, Rocky Sin, Arthur Millette. Really solid group there. Uh, Geno Stone, Kyle Hamilton, and Marcus Williams. That is a heck of a three safety rotation. You can do a lot of things there. Just a lot of good things. Daryl Worley is not even a bad player either. Moving on. Um, to me, you need a receiver and you need an edge. That's top two. They have a ton of free agents and they don't have money. And it gets worse because you have to pay Lamar. You have to pay other young guys. You have to, you know, you're going to have to start paying Linderbaum soon. You're going to have to start paying Zay Flowers in a few years. And you think they had help this year or they didn't, they needed more? They're not going to get more. It's going to get worse from here because they're going to start paying people more money. Um, you know, they're losing a Zietler. That, that's a reason why you might have to attack the O-line a little bit. Um, yeah, there's just issues down this roster of the free agents they're losing. To me, I don't know who they bring back in free agency. That's why nobody's underlined. Because they need to bring back some kind of receiver, but I don't know if those guys are the ones you want. Um, they definitely draft one, and then in the mid-rounds they hit some D-line, O-line stuff. But J.K. Dobbins is a talented player. You can't bring him back. Gus Edwards, I just don't see a reason to bring him back. He, he's just an average running back. Matty Buike, you'd really love to. I think he's your first target, but how realistic is that? I don't know. Um, it just is what it is. To me, they have to figure out a consistent offense. That's a big issue, and they've got to figure that out sooner rather than later. Uh, they need to restock some D linemen for sure if they do lose the guys they're projected to lose. And they need another edge setter because what they have now is just not cutting it. Odafe Owe and David Ojabo have not been doing well. To me, in the first round, Troy Franklin, Keon Coleman, Adonai Mitchell would all be solid picks. Second round, Chop Robinson or Tavondre Sweat. Different positions there, but either one would help out in different ways. And realistic free agency options, Derrick Henry could be a legit option. Leonard Williams, Tyler Boyd would all be good for just talent, veteran presence, and veteran savvy. To me, looking at this, Troy Franklin would be a great receiver to grab. However, will Lamar be able to throw to him? Probably not because he can't hit the sideline guys. Chop Robinson, he's a good second round pick, that's for sure, and would be a great upgrade over anybody they have now. And Derrick Henry could be a legitimate option here and would be a scary one-two punch with him and Keaton Mitchell. Either way, let me know what you guys think about this division. Uh, this is obviously, like, one of the better divisions in the league. And, you know, the outside looking in perspective is very interesting. So let me know what you guys think, and uh, I'll be glad to hear it, whether you're a fan of these teams or not. Sometimes the outside looking in perspective is better. So either way, make sure to hit that subscribe button, that like button. I appreciate you guys for watching all the way to the end, and I'll see you all in the next one.